Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for taking the time to stop by today. Let's pray together. Father, please open our hearts to the treasures that you have from us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I slept really well last night. I was terribly tired. We had this girls' conference that you see uh, immortalized on my shirt this past weekend at my church. And uh, being one of the leaders in that girls' ministry, I was really exhausted. Came home yesterday and took a, about a two-hour nap and then slept all night long last night. So I'm well rested. But, you know, some nights when you go to bed, you have a song stuck in your head, or, or at least I do. And uh, when I wrote the post, the post on which today's video is based, that song was Onward Christian Soldiers. You're probably familiar with it if you've been raised in the church. When I was a little girl, my mother was the pianist at the church and my father was the song leader, and we sang that song frequently. But I really didn't understand what it meant. What in the world? <laughs> Soldiers? War? Marching, marching, marching. In my little community of North Georgia, that, that, that concept of, of war had very little relevance to me. It took me a long time. It took me a long time to really get it. But, you know, an important aspect of the Christian life is the realization that our worldview is very different from the worldview of the world. The gospel of Jesus Christ that we preach is vastly different from the world's way of operating. The truth is that apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ, the world is full of people who, to some degree or other, are warring against our faith, literally warring against us. And the problem is that we, the church, have been largely oblivious to it all. Hence the title of this post, Oblivion and La 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 La. Oblivion and la 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 is not an effective battle strategy. It results in the enemy forces winning and your side getting stomped. So let's break this down today. Now, the first thing we have to realize is that we're in a war. We're in a war. Um, you know, the, uh, going on all around us is this great spiritual warfare with in, in the heavenlies, in the realm in which we can't see. Uh, there are angels warring against each other. You know, um, some people have this very erroneous and, I believe, satanic view of angels, uh, that they're these cute little cherubs that just flit around and shoot love arrows and this and that or the other. And the, the truth is that angels are warriors. God's angels are mighty warriors. And if you want an example of that, look at Daniel chapter 10. I'm not going to go into Daniel chapter 10 today, but uh, take a look at that chapter and you'll find that there was an angel in that chapter and he was prevented from coming to bring a message to Daniel for several days. He was prevented by an opposing angel who was fighting against him in the heavenlies for several days. And um, th that's just an example of what actually goes on in this spiritual war in which we are engaged. One of the clearest passages concerning our involvement in this spiritual battle is from Ephesians. It's Ephesians six twelve through 18. And it's one of the favorite passages of one of my friends, Mark. Um, in this passage, we learn that we are um, actual warriors in this battle as well. Now, I'm going to read it to you in two versions. I'm going to read it first in a more familiar version, the King James Version, the New King James, and then I'm going to read it in the message. So, um, let's look at the scriptures together. This is Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shot 
your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, that same passage in the Message Translation. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. You are up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. So after we realize that we are in this battle, whether we want to be a willing participant or not, the second thing is to grab our weapons. We need to dress for battle every day, or as my friend says, armor up. Let's examine these verses in more depth in my next video. This is the first in a three-part series. Well, I hope that you'll drop by and subscribe to my blog that you see there on your screen and also that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, thanks for stopping by today and let's close in prayer. Father, I fear that I've done a very paltry job of sharing about this important principle of the Christian walk. I pray that you'll enlighten the hearts of those watching today and those that read the words on the blog post and those praying this prayer with me today. Thank you for allowing your children to fight on your side because we know it's the winning side. Thank you that we can rest in the assurance that you are in control and that you allow the conflict for your honor and glory, but that ultimately you are the King of kings and Lord of lords and who will reign for all eternity. To you be all the honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen.